So welcome back to the second part of connecting to LinkedIn. In the first part, we went through the LinkedIn documentation. We created a LinkedIn application on their developer site, and we connected to it from within Unity and received a JSON response. In this video, what we want to do is we want to take this JSON response and make it easier to work with inside of Unity by creating a C Sharp class and deserializing this JSON to an instance of that class. So if we go back to our AppyGee console, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the response, and this will go the same for the request. If you have an example of the JSON request from something like Postman, uh, you're going to be able to do the same thing to get it back into Unity as a C-sharp class. We're going to Google our favorite JSON to C-sharp converter. We're going to paste the JSON here and generate a class. Then what we're going to do is copy this and paste it, say, at the top of our LinkedIn test class that we have created. Okay, so this class in here is a is part of the main response class, and let's call this linked in me response. We're going to leave everything the same way that it is. Uh, there are some things that when you're dealing with arrays, depending on how the JSON to, sharp, to C sharp converter converts it, there might have to be some adjustments. Now our next step is to define a field inside of our HTTP operation. Linked in me response. Let's call this response. And we're going to attribute this response with HTTP response JSON body. Uh, there are this is called a mapper inside of Web API Kit. What a mapper does is it's able to take a request or a response and serialize or deserialize, uh, let's say, from JSON to a C-sharp instance or from a C-sharp instance to JSON, maybe to XML, to a texture, to a sprite. Uh, it's, it's wide open how that conversion works from a byte stream. Instead of logging the text, let's log the response dot first name plus response dot last name. Okay. And that is all we need to change. We could also we could do this here, but probably in our application what we're gonna want to do this is on success we are going to debug log the operation right because we might if, if this call succeeds we want might want to take some action that is going to affect our unity scene so let's comment this out as well save it we're going to go back to our unity scene and wait for it to rebuild we're going to clear out the console and in the inspector for the linkedin code interceptor because we already have a token that we've acquired from LinkedIn, I want to show you how on the next on any subsequent calls after receiving an access token, until that token expires, there is not going to be any more consent from the user until that token expires. And expirations vary uh, from application to application. Google has an expiration time of eight hours, where LinkedIn I think it's sixty days. And when the token expires, the user will either be prompted to consent again, or if there's a refresh mechanism provided by the application, the token will be refreshed behind the scenes, and the experience will be seamless to the user. So it's all dependent on how the application implemented their OF process. So start play. We're going to go back in our console. And, and there it is, there is our output, which means that the JSON that came back was properly converted to an instance of the C-sharp class that we just created. And you can see that here, that 
this converter, the serialized JSON, was applied. So that's it. This was a pretty quick video. In the next video, what we're going to do is go through the same process, but with Google. And we're going to use their Google Plus API to retrieve the user information.